Adiyom. This is a reading from Awaken Inside Yoga Meditation, a book by Reverend Jagannath Carrera. What's on your plate and what's in your mind are related. Success in meditation is enhanced by a diet that encourages the mind to be still and clear. For centuries, yogis have recommended a natural lacto-vegetarian diet as best for rapid and sure progress. To understand why, we need to discuss three important terms, sattva, rajas, and tamas. These three, known collectively as the gunas, literally translated to strand or thread, are the fundamental forces or qualities of nature, respectively representing balance, activity, and inertia. They are reminiscent of neutrons, electrons, and protons. All activities as well as foods are divided into these categories. Concerning diet, foods of a category will influence the mind in a like way. Sattvic foods will tend to leave the mind in a balanced state. Rajasic foods will agitate the mind, and tamasic foods will tend to make the mind dull. It follows that the diet best suited for meditation consists mostly of foods in the sattvic category. Here's a brief summary of which foods fall into each category. Sattva, raw, steamed, lightly sautéed or roasted vegetables, grains, beans, lentils, nuts, soy products, fruits, nuts, dairy, food that is lightly spiced, not too sour or hot, rajas, red meat, poultry, fish, and other seafood, eggs, spicy food, onions, garlic, caffeine. Tamas, beef, old, cold, overcooked foods, deep fried foods, alcoholic drinks. What is on our plate should consist largely of foods in the sattvic category. At the same time, most of us have a tendency toward tamas, fatigue and sluggishness. Therefore, a little rajasic food can help overcome the tamasic aspect. So it's fine to have a moderate amount of warming and gently stimulating foods such as onions and garlic and spice, like ginger, cinnamon, or cayenne, in the diet as needed. When the weather is cold and damp, as in a tamasic state, adding a little rajasic food helps keep the body and mind in balance. The same is true if you are suffering from a cold, which is also a tamasic state. Adding some spice to your diet will help the cold speed away. Along with increasing sattva, a vegetarian diet is best for meditation because it is the most nonviolent. No doubt, life in some form is always taken for us to live. A potato sacrifices its existence for us. It has consciousness, but it is not as evolved as animals or humans. It's something like deep sleep or being under anesthesia. On the other hand, an animal can sense its impending death. The fear, emotional turmoil, and suffering it undergoes are transferred to its flesh. The anxiety stays in the meat as the vibration of fear and as bile and other toxic chemicals released during stress. When we eat meat, we absorb all of this. That's why eating meat tends to increase aggressiveness and restlessness. Some people, aware of the suffering the animals undergo, offer a prayer of thanksgiving to the animal for giving its life. Their intention is to make reparation for the animal's suffering with their loving thoughts. They may also believe that their prayers cancel out the karma that eating meat entails. It's true that sincere prayers for these animals can benefit their departed souls, but they cannot completely absolve us from the karma we are bound to face for being a cause of their suffering, especially if the prayers are repeated with the intent of being absolved from the negative karma. This is truer today than ever before. Most animals raised for food lead lives of great pain and suffering, they lack exercise and are not allowed to interact with other animals. They are fed an unnatural diet, given antidepressants and caffeine, and are injected with hormones to artificially accelerate growth and antibiotics to stem disease. 
If you eat flesh foods, you ingest those chemicals as well. That said, eating meat does not make you an immoral person unfit for spiritual life. As Jesus said, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 12. You can succeed in meditation regardless of diet, but food that comes with suffering makes it more difficult. More effort will have to be exerted to overcome the influence of flesh foods. On the physiological side, meat is an acidic food. Excess acid leads to many diseases and disorders. It irritates the nervous system and can be a causative factor in inflammatory diseases like arthritis and heart disease. A balanced vegetarian diet provides all the nutrients needed for good health. Fresh vegetarian foods are brimming with prana. The fact that grains can be sprouted and grown and that seeds have the power to reproduce vegetables is a proof that the life force in vegetarian food is potent. It is prana more than nutri nutrients that the body and mind requires. Nutrients are physical manifestations of the more subtle and powerful prana. Meat is a dead food. You can't plant any part of a chicken to get more chicken. Meat eating is also an inefficient use of the planet's resources. For example, it takes a tremendous amount of grain and soy to feed the animals destined for our tables. Estimates are that if Americans reduce their intake of meat by 10%, 100 million people could be adequately fed. Some people advocate vegetarianism based on certain physiologic structures in the human body, contending that they are more closely resemble that of herbivores. They compare such anatomical features as relative intestinal length, eyes that are equipped to see in low light, shape of teeth, and the rough textured tongue of carnivorous animals with herbivores. Although some don't agree, these comparisons present a strong argument that human beings are better suited for assimilating nutrients from non-meat sources. Regardless of these structural considerations, there are many good reasons for eating a balanced vegetarian diet. It leaves the mind clear and calm, causes the least suffering, provides necessary nutrients while being easier to digest, is high, naturally high in fiber, builds immunity, and is heart healthy. Sri Swami Shivananda taught in matters of diet evolution is better than revolution. It's worth considering a gradual reduction of the amount of meat in your diet. Experiment with the vast number of vegetarian options open to you and note how the change in your diet affects your physical and mental well-being. Your state of mind when eating. You will digest your food much better if you eat with a calm state. One reason for saying a meal prayer before eating is that it helps you center yourself. You digest and assimilate better if you are relaxed. A meal prayer accomplishes this and also develops gratitude for a miracle of the earth coming to your table as food. If you don't know a meal prayer, just sit for a minute or two, watch your breath, holding the thought of gratitude to Mother Earth. Eat mindfully and chew the food well. Master Gurudev Sachidananda always said, it's better to fast than to eat fast. Avoid the cranky cook. The mindset of the cook affects the food. Bad-tempered cooks infect even the most nutritious food with their toxic attitude. Your mind can be affected by these negative thoughts. One good reason to bless the food before eating is that it raises its vibration. If you're cooking and get into a testy mood, put food preparation on pause until the feeling passes. If crankiness and bad attitudes can infect food, a peaceful mind and good attitude can enrich it. Play uplifting music or chant while you cook. Serve 
the food as a loving offering. Cook the food with love, serve it with love, and eat with love. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Peace, Peace, Peace. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light.